welcome back to episode 109 of Podcast Royal. I am your host, Rachel. And I'm your host, Jessica. And I want to start by asking you how your week is this week. I really enjoyed seeing you the other night at dinner just a couple nights ago. I did too. Yeah. For our listeners, we have this fun little Mexican restaurant. We um, always go there. We do in a cute part of town and we went Sunday night and it was so good as always, but it was the first time that I've been out this season and it was really chilly. We had cold weather here this weekend. Yeah. So let me tell you listeners how we both showed up to this dinner. I am in yoga pants, which is what I'm in 99% of the time these days. And like, kind of, I don't even know how to describe that. Like kind of like a loose V-neck t-shirt. Jessica comes and she's already sitting at the table. When I get there, she has her blazer draped over her shoulder. She's not wearing it. It's draped over her shoulder. She looks (laughs) so chic and I look terrible. And like, I literally like I've got my black flats on and you know, it's Sunday night and you looked like you were like ready to be on like New York city fashion week. Seriously. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, no, I thought, <laughs> but I thought you looked cute too, but you were making me so cold because you had short sleeves on the whole time. <laughs> and I run hot. So I was, I was perfectly fine, but yeah, you were chilly, but it was good. The conversation is good. The company is good. The food there is really good. And it was just a good time. So we were just talking a minute ago offline and the Royals are certainly not, not, not busy. They've been very busy always. And I think that's going to be the norm, but it feels like a little bit lighter of a week than it has been recently. So we'll take that. So let's go ahead and get started with our Bit of British segment. For this week's Bit of British, I'm sharing a fun Instagram follow for our Anglophile listeners who like to see glimpses of life in England. So I have been following Helene in between for a while now. She is an American And she and her husband have traveled internationally quite a bit. They're they're travel bloggers. And earlier this year, they made the decision to move to the UK from the US. I think they might have lived in Texas originally, Mm -hmm. but they've just landed in the UK within the past week or so. And they'll be living in Oxford. And so she's sharing lots of photos of their explorations around town and around the UK. And earlier this week, they were visiting the University of Oxford. And today they were actually in the Cotswolds. So she's been doing a lot of fun content over there. She actually shared some grocery store finds as well, which I thought was kind of funny. She took a picture in Sainsbury's of this U.S. Southern style breaded chicken. So I guess. I guess maybe some of our friends in the UK like to try some US style chicken. Thought that was really funny. And she also showed a photo of a plastic bottle of Diet Coke. Apparently in the UK, the lid to the Diet Coke is attached to the bottle. So you don't lose it. So, you know, here in the US, I don't know, maybe we have a problem with littering lids to bottles, but um, she just shows a lot of the differences between the U.S. and the U.K., and it's kind of fun to follow along. One funny discovery they had this week was that their home in the U.K. doesn't have outlets in the bathroom, Mm. and I'm not sure if this is like a code requirement for all homes or if it's a characteristic of older homes, but I do remember this when I visited my cousin who was living in England several years ago. Um, I'm trying to recall the exact setup. I think there were two rooms um, for the bathroom. One had the shower and one had the toilet. And if I'm recalling correctly, the room with the toilet had an outlet, but not the shower room. And I think that's because water and outlets pose obviously a risk. So I'm guessing it may be a code requirement in the UK, but Anyway, she's got a lot of fun content on her account, a lot of comparisons like that. I think they're actually headed on a trip to Germany soon. So if you like that kind of stuff, go check out their Instagram. Again, it's at Helene in between. You know what that makes me think of? Helene what? T and a buddy. T and a buddy. Oh, yeah. T and a buddy were our very first guests on the show. This was years ago, two years ago plus. And they're this adorable couple, one's from the US, one's from the UK. And they talk about the differences between cultures. And so that sounds really fun. 
Well, and funny you mentioned that they actually also live in Texas, but um, I, you know, I, I love their podcast. They have been in the UK recently. They okay. did kind of an extended stay there and they've been sharing some stuff. I actually think they had a podcast drop today about Windsor and Eaton they visited while they were there. So that's another one for listeners to check out too, is Tiana Betty. And it's, it's B-U-T-T-Y Betty. And we love them. They are, they've always been so good to us. So shout out to our fellow podcasters. Definitely. Well, let's go ahead and get started on our Royal Rundown. Are you ready to chat about this week's events, Rachel? Let's do it. All right. So to get started, the Princess of Wales or the Princess of Pantsuits, as we titled our last episode, finally broke her suit streak with a really fun sweater vest and this monochromatic look last week. I know you saw it, Rachel. Yes, but she was still in pants. But so, but we'll we'll take this slight break from the pantsuits. Although I do, again, I like the pantsuits. It's just <laughs> let's not overkill the pantsuits. Let's not do too much of a good thing. Totally. So she had an engagement in Bracknell where she visited a community hub that has a team working to provide supplies to individuals who have fled Ukraine in the midst of conflict in that country. And the team there was packing boxes of food and clothing to be delivered. And while she was there, she actually grabbed a marker and she wrote a message on one of the boxes that said, we are all thinking of you. Did you see that note? I did. And she has beautiful handwriting. She does. I thought that same which thing. Of course, which of course she does. Because I'm telling you, this is a woman of many talents that really doesn't put much of a foot wrong. And so of course she has beautiful penmanship. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have, whenever I write, like actually write something out, which is never, thankfully, I, it literally looks like hieroglyphics. You cannot read my handwriting. Well, she, after she, that she headed over to visit with some children participating in some art projects and she actually participated in one herself there was this large painting of a tree and the leaves were handprints and so she put on this like blue rubber glove and she was adding her own painted handprint to the tree which I thought was really fun to see and then we got a photo of her with an eight-year-old girl there named Liza and I thought this was really sweet while she was chatting with her Catherine told Liza that she overheard Princess Charlotte, who's also eight, singing a song that morning called Shine Jesus Shine. And she I said know it that made song. Her- and I think that's adorable. Yeah. yeah. Well, she said it made her very happy to hear Charlotte singing that. And then Catherine asked Liza about her favorite song. And I think Liza really liked to be a princess of Wales. I saw another photo of them, like in a group photo, and Liza was super cute. She had Uh, long red hair and this little skirt and Mary Jane shoes with socks. And it was just a really cute encounter. Yes, that's adorable. And you want to know something that I learned from, well, actually I learned it from last episode. We know Charlotte loves dance. We knew princess Diana loved dance. Camilla loves dance too. So I didn't, I did not know the Camilla part, but yeah, dance is a love of a lot of women in the family. Well, I also love dance. I do too. I do too. (laughs) Okay, so now let's get on to Catherine's fashion. As I said, she was in this sort of monochromatic gray look with the addition of a white shirt, which I think kind of broke up some of that, you know, same color look. But she had this um, pair of trousers on from Saison, which the trousers retail for under 200. Um, So a little bit more of an attainable price point there compared to what we see Royals wear a lot of the time. And then she had on the sleeveless gray sweater vest or a jumper as they call it in the UK. So her sweater vest had a little bit of a higher neckline, but it wasn't quite a turtleneck. Um, And I believe the vest also retails for under 200, if I recall that. And then under the vest, she was wearing this long sleeve white collared shirt and she had the whole outfit paired with some plaid J. Crew heels, which were being reported as a rewear. Um, apparently, she first wore those in 2016. And then she had her little gold hoops that we've been seeing her in a lot lately. They've got little um, pearls on the hoops, and those retail for around $82. So this look was, um, I thought it was really cute. I love the sweater vest mm-hmm. and the button up shirt underneath with the collar. I, I thought it was adorable. 
I liked it too. Although when you texted me about it, I said this and I still maintain this. I like, <laughs> I like the look, but I wore that outfit. I wore the heck out of that exact outfit in 1998 over and over <laughs> and over again. So again, you know, you know, you're getting a little bit up there in age when you really experienced the trend the first time. And then now it's back again, you know, 25 years later and you're experiencing it again. I like it. But again, that was very on trend in like 1998. And well, you know, 90s now. fashion is back. It really is like uh, so much of what everyone is wearing is, is totally my middle school days and yours, you were the same age. So yours to 1997 ish to 1999, like every, all of that is very back right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, I will say like, I don't hate it. I love the, no, I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. So, um, I thought this was a cute outfit. I could definitely take inspiration from this one. Yeah. I like it. Okay, well, we also had some funny encounters with both the Prince and Princess of Wales this past week at their engagements, and I really wanted to talk about these. So first, the couple, um, you you may recall, they visited Cardiff, Wales to kick off Black History Month, and so we'll start with that one. They were all gathering really closely for this group photo at the Grange Pavilion, and William, right in the middle of everyone, just right as they're taking the photo, says, who's pinching my bottom? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I was a little bit surprised by that, to say the least. Well, of course, everyone thought it was funny. And I love this because I thought it was so relatable. I feel like we've all been in a situation where someone has cracked this joke or made, you know, we've probably made a joke like that ourselves at some point. And I think it really shows a more relaxed personal side of him. I think it highlights his sense of humor. And honestly, I feel like it makes the public maybe not be so nervous or stiff in his presence, which, you know, I think is really important as someone in his role, you know, automatically people are going to be nervous around him. So if you can do something to make people more comfortable, um, I think it makes them more likable. So I, I loved it. I thought it was funny. Yeah. I know you did too, Rachel. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a really, it was good. It was, he said, actually, William said today, and um, we'll talk about this engagement in a minute, but he said today that humor really helps him get through any mental health challenges he's having. And so he, he's hilariously funny. They all are. And I just love it. I also just love his choice of the word bottom. <laughs> yeah, you can tell that you can tell he has young children. <laughs> That's something that a dad of, you know, three kids under 10 would say. Well, next we had the Princess of Wales as she did a solo engagement in Hull where she participated in wheelchair rugby training to bring awareness to the Disability Rugby League and the work that they're doing to help support fitness for those who are wheelchair bound. So you know, Catherine really thrives in these sorts of like active engagements. We know she's super athletic. So she was in workout wear and she also had on some cute white Lululemon sneakers, which I have to add, I own the same pair, but in a nude color and I wear them all the time to the gym. They are great for working out. So any listener that's in the market for new workout shoes, mm -hmm. the ones she had on are awesome. So she was uh, strapped into a wheelchair and she was really having a lot of fun with this team. She was all smiles. And I don't know, I just thought at this engagement, she really shined. I thought she looked genuinely happy to be there. And I think we've established that her element is, you know, sporting events and engaging with children. I think yeah. she does well in both of those scenarios. Yeah, that's as you said it best. She's definitely in her element there. Well, I also loved that the Rugby League actually gave her three kids jerseys for her to take home to George, Charlotte, and Louie. And I don't know if listeners saw this photo, but the jerseys actually had their names printed on the backs. And um, one thing I'll note about the Rugby League is it's considered the most inclusive sporting arrangement because it's open to players regardless of gender or disability. So mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I just thought that was a great engagement and I loved how they welcomed her in to, you know, get in a wheelchair and play with them. I thought it was great. Yeah, it was great. I mean, she's had, Kate has had a really great week of engagements this week as, as I think is becoming the norm. I mean, she's, her calendar has never been more full or busier. And I feel like she's really in her, as you said, I'm going to keep repeating this in her element, doing engagements that really work for her. I agree. Okay. So for the funny encounter, 
I saw this video shared on Instagram, but there was a moment where Catherine was speaking with one of the players and another player walked up behind her and tickled her around her waist. And you can see her, <laughs> she jumps and she has a surprise expression on her face. And then she turns around and of course she quickly sees who it is and she gives him a big smile and shakes his hand. And I mean, you cannot watch the video without laughing. And I don't think I've talked to you about this yet, Rachel. Did no, we haven't talked it? about it yet, but it's pretty great. It's pretty great. And like the, <laughs> just her, her expression is fantastic. Uh, yeah, so I, I love that one and great job to William and Catherine both this week for bringing us good content and laughs and I'm looking forward to everything else they've got on the calendar for the next few months this fall. But I know, like you mentioned, we've got some big news related to World uh, Mental Health Day um, this week. So can you tell us a little bit about what we have to expect there and what's been going on? Yes, yeah, so both William and Kate and Harry and Megan had engagements today. We are recording as we always do on Tuesday. Today's October 10th. The day this episode comes out, which is October 11th, is actually World Mental Health Day. And all four of them, albeit separately, marked the occasion true to form as mental health is an issue that all are passionate about. So today, the 10th, William and Kate hosted a forum called Exploring Our Emotional Worlds, which brought together 100 young delegates nominated by 10 leading mental health and youth engagement charities to start a conversation about how they manage their emotions and how they can be supported. So this event was in partnership with BBC Radio One. It was a chance for the delegates to talk about specific mental health challenges their generation faces. So I don't know if you've seen it and I did not add a photo in here because it was kind of a late ad, but Kate, I don't have the, the designer or anything, but Kate was wearing a yellow blazer and I thought that was gorgeous. And then she was wearing earrings. So at a previous engagement, and I have not fully researched this out. So forgive me, because this was a late ad, but um, she was wearing earrings that were given to her at an engagement. And I know, I know where she was. I, I think it was with, actually, I think it was with rugby. She was, she was doing something athletic and listeners, you know what I'm talking about. And she was given a pair of earrings by a mom whose daughter, who was a teenager, I believe had committed suicide. And so Kate wore those earrings today to this event. And I thought that was really poignant and just really meaningful and just shows how much, at least if you're Kate, how much your clothes can convey such a powerful message. So I don't know if you saw her look from today. Again, this was, this just happened. So it was kind of a late ad and I don't have photos in here, but she looked beautiful as ever. Yes, I did see that look today and I did see the earrings as well. Um, I agree. I thought that was really thoughtful of her to plan, to plan mm -hmm. that for today. Um, I did want to note the, uh, I believe the blazer that she wore was um, LK Bennett. Okay. Okay. I had not seen that. So I love, I love the color. It's definitely sunshiny and a pop of color. And then, so meanwhile, in New York city, Harry and Megan hosted the Archwell foundation's first in-person event. This one focused on parents. It was called the Archwell foundation parent summit, mental wellness in a digital age. It gave voice to families passionate about building a safer online world for children and teens. So this is actually a part of Project Healthy Minds World Mental Health Day Festival and featured parents who, this is really poignant as well, who experienced tragic loss connected to their child's social media use. So um, I, again, late ad, don't have the designer, but did you see Megan's look? It was like the off the shoulder. I couldn't tell because she was seated in the photos that I saw. I'll have to take a deeper dive on this, but it was off the shoulder. I think it was at the separates, but I'm not totally sure. So listeners just help me out because this just happened right before we started recording. So um, did you see that look? I did. I saw that. And I, I think that was a really interesting event that they had today. I mean, that's an incredibly timely topic in today's world with, mm -hmm. you know, the digital space and the truly unlimited access that young people have to the internet it seems so dangerous. Yeah. It, and I thought Megan looked beautiful. And uh, again, like not to reduce the events by talking about fashion, but we like fashion around here and we also like the work that they're doing. Very powerful conversations had on in London and in New York City and just really powerful work in the mental health space. Again, an issue that is important to all four of them. So bravo to them for taking charge and having 
discussions this way. And I think a lot of people are making a fuss about, oh, well, they're having events at the same time, albeit in different places. Well, yeah, it's because World Mental Health Day is tomorrow. And so I don't read much into it. I'm just glad that the work is being done. And they were about actually two very different topics under the same umbrella. So good for all four of them. And then switching over to King Charles. So he turned 75 on November 14th, which actually we, I say this every time I talk about his birthday, November 14th is the same day that podcast <laughs> Royal turns three. We did not plan that by the way, back in 2020, we're about to have a three-year-old show. That's like a fully like functioning toddler. <laughs> we're like, <laughs> like, what is, what is the stage right above? I'm not a mom yet. So what is the stage right above toddler anyway? Um, but he, King Charles is not celebrating his birthday alone. So the Princess Foundation announced it will mark the King's milestone for fellow folks who are turning 75 with two celebratory events, one at Highgrove Gardens in Gloucestershire, which I never can pronounce correctly. It, I'm pronouncing it correctly in my head. And then one at Dumfries House in Cumnock, Scotland. So the event will take place on Charles's birthday Eve, which is November 13th. And online, nom I actually really love this, online nominations for the parties open this past Monday. So the public is encouraged to nominate individuals who should be rewarded for doing good work in their communities. And in addition to individuals turning 75, organizations who are turning that milestone year are also eligible to apply. So cool. I know, right? Like, if so if you know anybody to, who's turning 75, which my mom is too young and actually my dad is just barely too young too. But if you know anybody or you listeners are turning 75, apply for this, please. Like that's really cool. So it's not clear right now whether the King himself will attend, but we do know that there will be an afternoon tea and live music. So it just sounds really fun. And that's, that's like, I, I mean, I've never wished so badly. I was born in 1948. I do, <laughs> I do right now. Um, okay, so I just got I found this interesting for investitures of which there were two last week insignias with the king on them are finally beginning to appear on medals presented to recipients at investiture ceremonies I think that they were, um, you know how you know how sustainable Charles is and the mm -hmm. royal family is and so I think that they went ahead and used all that they had left of the ones with the queen, the late queen on them. And so now a year on the insignias with the king on them are finally appear, beginning to appear on medals. Um, and there will be six new medal designs for 50 different awards presented at investitures, replacing the, again, of course, the prior imagery of Queen Elizabeth. So Princess Anne led the investitures last Tuesday. Prince William did so last Wednesday. So here's a question for you. If you were to be honored at an investiture, which royal would you hope was pinning the medal on you? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, I feel like if you have this rare opportunity to go and receive this honor, you have to hope that it's the actual reigning monarch, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, yes. Like, if, if you had the choice, then... I don't know why you wouldn't choose the king. Oh, I, I don't know. I might actually choose William, to be honest with you. I was going to say it, it, William would be a very close second for sure. Well, honestly, I would choose Anne too. I, I think we, I think Anne and I would have a good old conversation. We would have a good time. I don't know. I mean, I guess I, yeah, like you just said it this way and I don't think you meant to, but if I were getting that honor, I don't know if I would care who was doing it. You know, I think I would just be honored to be there, but um, I mean, I, like, my my 10 year old self says go with William <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's sure. your childhood dream right there to be in the same room as him so I guess that's <laughs> my answer because that was my childhood crush like massively that's actually how I got into all this royal stuff is I grew up in love with William so there <laughs> you go all right finally finally been waiting on this for so long we have a release date for season six which of course is the final season of The Crown. So for the first time ever, the show is being split into two parts. Part one will debut on November 16th. So you can basically just count me out for that day, which thankfully is a Thursday. My weekend is Thursday, Friday. So that is my Saturday. So you will not find me. I will be underground watching The Crown. And then part two will come out December 14th. So I put a photo here in our research I want you to look at it. Isn't it stunning? So this is the photo. This is a promotional photo from Netflix for season six of The Crown. It's the photo of 
Diana in that blue one piece, like an ice blue one piece. It's not really Diana. It's Elizabeth Debicki, but um, she's sitting like what looks, I, I think it's actually, you know, what? I just put this together. It's her sitting on the, um, on the boat, like, you know, like out, out there. I thought, although I thought that was not wooden, it looked more like a diving board of some sort, but it's that photo. You've never seen it from this angle, but you've seen it from like the rocks over there of the, her just mm -hmm. sitting out there alone at the end of this, I guess, pier for lack of a better term, you know, but you know what photo I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. No, it's oh, a great, isolated. it's a great yeah. promotional photo. You've got the, you know, huge, big part of the photo is the sky, the clouds, and then we see the blue water and um, her from the back sitting on the edge of, it kind of looks like a wooden, a wooden dock or a pier. And um, she's got this low back blue swimsuit. She's kind of looking down at the water. Um, mm -hmm. Very eye-catching for sure. Yeah, I just, it's stunning. And actually I did, I thought it was stunning before I even pieced together that it's that famous photo of her, which was so symbolic at the time because it represented how alone she was, but yet not alone at all. So I can't wait. That is about a month from now. I wish it was tomorrow, but I am excited. Yeah, definitely. I will be sure not to call you and make plans for November 16th. I will not be available. You can <laughs> call and text me, but I will not be like stepping away from the screen until I have completed part one. Well, before we close out the Royal Rundown, I did want to touch on the Edinburghs because we haven't talked about them in a little while and they've been busy this past week. Um, Prince Edward visited Brighton, Hove, and Sussex for the Duke of Edinburgh Awards, where he met with young people to learn about the positive impact the D of E Award program has had on their lives. And I thought this was kind of a cool day out for him. I just, you know, I, I feel like we've said this a lot lately, but we've had a lot of fun engagements this fall so we far. Really have. Yeah. Um, so this was fun to follow along. They shared it on, on social on the Royal Family's Instagram page. But as a reminder, these awards were created to spark youth to develop their skill sets and serve their communities. So he joined up with a group to help in the kitchen and he had an apron on and they were baking pastries for local food banks. And then he headed over and met with a team of students participating in an indoor football training. And he also learned about a group of youth developing their bouldering skills. So one of the students he met told him that being a part of the football team really helped him learn the importance of teamwork, resilience, and interpersonal communication skills, which I thought was really insightful for a youth to, to think about how a sport like football helps your communication skills. Yeah. Um, it was great. And then another student noted that she's had to really learn to push herself and her experience has really helped her as she plans to study medicine after college. Mm -hmm. um, so another really positive impact of this program. And Rachel, I have to ask you, this had me wondering mm -hmm. if you had um, an opportunity to, let's say, fully step away from work for a period of time and immerse yourself in some sort of educational class or skill development, what would you want to learn? I mean, I don't know if I'd have to step away from work to do this, but a few years ago, I think I think this was pre-COVID, I was trying to have more hobbies because I really don't have <laughs> hobbies. Like I, I work so much. I read. I get, Reading is my hobby, I guess. But, and I like to paint, but I wanted more hobbies. So I wanted to learn how to play golf. That was a miserable failure. And somewhere at golf tech, there's a video of my golf lesson. And it's just the, probably the worst thing they've ever seen in their life. Then I tried to learn how to do calligraphy. Actually, that was inspired by Megan. That was also an epic failure because, and I'm not saying this is the reason left-handed people can do calligraphy just not this left-handed person. Like I, I've, even when I'm not trying to do calligraphy, when I write, which again, I've mentioned earlier in the show is not a pleasant experience for me or the person trying to read it. But when I write, because I'm left-handed, it smears the ink everywhere across the page. And all of it to say that I tried to do calligraphy is actually a lot harder than you think it is. Have you ever tried calligraphy? I have. My parents went on a trip one time when I was younger and they bought me a, a set. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's really, it's an art form. You know, yes, you've be it is. Art. And I should have known that I 
I'm not, that is not where I excel. We'll just put it that way. So, I mean, I guess I would like to maybe try calligraphy again, although it was kind of an abysmal fail failure the first time. Um, I don't know. Do you have an answer for this? Because I don't know. Like, I just don't have any, like, that's well, sad. I don't really have hobbies. The reason I asked about stepping away from work is because I feel like that's the challenge as an adult, right? It's like, we just don't have time. Um, yeah. I think for me, just something purely that I enjoy doing, um, I would probably take like, probably like enroll in culinary school classes. Cause I love to, yeah. cook. I love to bake, but I've never had formal training. I'm just kind of self-taught. And so I think it might be fun to do something like that. Um, but I don't know. I, I that's, that's a good question. I'm like you, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess I could think of some hobbies that I have, but I don't know that there are any like formal official yeah. hobbies <laughs> I don't know like I literally went down the Wikipedia page of hobbies and I was like what would I <laughs> do and like I just I mean then you think of like Kate for example who can like play the piano play any sport under the sun and I'm just like well I tried calligraphy one time for two hours and then I quit and so I don't know I need to Maybe I need, I, I need to get back into painting. This is neither here nor there, but I need more hobbies. I need more balance in my life. So, well, you know, my grandmother is really good at knitting and her mother, my mm. grandmother who um, lived in England, um, she was also really good at knitting and mm -hmm. she would knit so many sweaters and we still have them um, in our family sweaters that she knitted over the years to give us when we were kids and some of the adults in the family. And so that's, that's a fun hobby too. And something yeah. that people can like, hold on to and have, you know, a memory. Yeah, so I, I've only ever knitted a scarf. I've never gotten more advanced than that. <laughs> yeah. Well, my mom used to cross stitch and she was really good at it when I was a kid. And I, I don't think she really does it anymore, but um, I've done like a little bit of that. Like I've never knitted a scarf or anything like that, but I've done like some cross stitch and that actually is mindless and really like a great outlet, honestly. So maybe, maybe that's a good idea. I don't know. Well, we'll have to come up with some, but before we, we close this out, I'm going to touch on Sophie real quick. So she has been in Ethiopia. Did you know that? I did actually. I saw a story about that today. Yeah. And so she's been a longtime advocate for the prevention of sexual violence and conflict initiative. And she was actually there visiting female survivors of violence and learning about how victims are cared for following an attack and being connected with an organization that can support their journey to healing. So she met with a few organizations, including the Saba Core IDP Camp, One Stop Center, and the Women's Development Center. And these organizations offer medical care and counseling and assistance with positioning women for future employment so they can regain their independence um, following, you know, a, an incident of violence. Um, so that was really interesting to see her working in that space again. And also while she was there, she learned more about vision health in Africa, which um, I think is, this is another cause that we've seen her champion a lot in the past, but World Sight Day is October 12th, and she has been learning about the mission to end blindness and particularly awareness around trachoma and practices that are being taught to help prevent that. And, and I didn't know this, but Trachoma is a highly contagious bacterial infection of the eye, and it is the leading preventable cause of blindness. Mm. Did you know that it was the leading preventable cause of blindness? I, I didn't, but I know that that is a cause that's really close to Sophie's heart. Yeah. And so a key part of preventing trachoma is providing access to clean water and teaching healthy hygiene. And so mm -hmm. she was there learning about what they're doing in that space. But I just thought that, you know, this trip that she did, I feel like, I feel like it didn't get a ton of coverage, um, but yeah. it's a really great example of Royals bringing awareness to really important causes. Yeah. I mean, if you listen to our 109 episodes, we have learned things that through the Royals that we never would have known, like that being an example. And so, I mean, it, like, I hate it for Edward and Sophie because they're just honestly, probably the two most stable, hardworking Royals. I mean, if they're not the two, they're right up there. And I feel like their work goes so under the radar a lot. So good for you for calling them out and sharing what they're doing because they're more understated. They're not going to be on the front page of the magazine, but the work they're doing really matters. Want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily. 
then distribute it everywhere and earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since we discovered Spotify for Podcasters, we have had so much fun trying out all of the features like Q&As and polls that let us be really creative and engage with our audience. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Well, let's move into segment three, which is listener Q&A. We do not have a listener Q&A this week, but we do have an email from a listener named Elizabeth, which is a good lead-in actually to our final Royal Deep Dive here in a bit. Mm -hmm. So Elizabeth writes, hello, Podcast Royal, huge fan of your podcast. So fun to listen to, and you have great insight into not just the usual rundown, but different angles as to why or how certain events are happening in the Royal family. I heard you were recording an upcoming episode on Wallace Simpson, and I wanted to share some interesting information. She is actually a cousin, quite distant at this point, of course, However, in my great grandmother's journals, which I have, she writes of Wallace, not Simpson at the time, that she, <laughs> that she absolutely could not stand her. All right. Um, other passages offer that she was a huge embarrassment to the family. Yikes. And nobody was allowed to speak about her or acknowledge the family connection. Wow. Wow. Dang. I mean, my gosh. Okay. If, if, you, if that's what your family's saying about you, then my goodness. Okay. Uh, back to Elizabeth. I thought that was interesting and provides some American perspective of her because of course she's not uh, very well regarded in the UK, but hey, yeah, apparently this was a universal thing. Um, back to Elizabeth. I also wanted to share that I was at the special coronation exhibit at Buckingham Palace this summer. It was so wonderful. And I was looking for pictures to send you, couldn't find them. And then my husband reminded me no photos were allowed inside the palace. And then she mm-hmm. had a sad face, which thank you for thinking of us, Elizabeth. If there's any listeners, if there's any photos you can send, um, Jessica will probably put that on Instagram, but I, I'm with you that photos aren't allowed. I've, I've been to exhibits where photos aren't allowed. Anyway, back to Elizabeth. Thanks again for the great podcast, Elizabeth. So thank you for writing in, Elizabeth. That is some interesting perspective and kind of says uh, not, not, it's not really great for Wallace if your own family says that about you. Yeah, really interesting insight. I'm glad she shared that with us. And I'm excited to hear what you have to say yeah. about Wallace Simpson. And so we can kind of see both perspectives there. Um, so really cool. Thanks for, for sending yes, that in. Thank you, Elizabeth. We appreciate that. Before Rachel jumps into deep dive, though, we do have a little update for Royals around the world. So we'll run through that really quickly. Um, since our last recording, the Norwegian Royals participated in the opening day of Parliament uh, for them. And there, King Harold gave a speech. And I just put this in our our notes today, Rachel, because I read somewhere that the gold throne that he's sipping on is believed to date back to at least the early 1800s, but it was in a museum up until recently and they restored it for him to be able to continue using it. And I just had to put this in here because I love this fancy room that they're in. He is sitting on this big gold throne with red velvet cushions and there's like, I don't know, red carpet and the big curtains and the big Mm -hmm. lights. And it just looks like, doesn't it look like something out of a fairy tale book? Like it's not yeah, even. Yeah, it does. It really, it really does. That I mean, if you want to look at like what royalty looks like, that's it. And by the way, I didn't put this in our notes, but there. So I like this podcast called Even the Rich. Have you ever listened to it? I believe I have once or twice. Yeah. So they have different seasons in in each season. They cover like a different like they've done Beyonce and Jay Z or like J Lo and Ben Affleck. It's a good show. And now I just noticed yesterday actually that there is a show called even the royals and it's not 
mm -hmm. about the British royal family necessarily. It's about like royal families around the world. So this is catching on. I just want to say that we were here first, as I always do. But um, it's I haven't listened to it yet. It looks like the first few episodes are about Marie Antoinette. And then it looks, based on the description of the show, it looks like they're going to cover royals around the world. And so I don't know if they'll do modern. Oh, actually, the one that's coming up, because you have to be a subscriber to Wondery Plus or whatever it is. And that one is actually about Princess Martha Louise from Norway. We've talked about that on the show many times, including in the last couple of weeks. So again, cannot stress this enough. Royals around the world are just as interesting as the British royal family. And listeners, if you could see this photo, this is like royalty personified right here. Well, and, you know, we always see photos of, you know, Buckingham Palace, and we don't often get glimpses into other royal families palaces or meeting places right. um so it's fun to see absolutely okay so from belgium we've got new birthday photos released for prince emmanuel prince emmanuel is king philippe's third child and the younger brother of princess elizabeth who is the future queen of belgium so as a reminder um princess elizabeth is 21 years old she has a younger brother under her, Prince Gabriel, who's 20. And then we have Prince Emmanuel. He just turned 18 on October 4th. And then right below him, there's one more child, um, Princess Eleanor, who is 15. So um, four kids in the family. The palace released two photographs of the prince at the Palace of Laken. I haven't seen any news regarding any sort of like official celebration for his birthday, but I did include one of the photos, Rachel, here. You can see it. He's this guy, um, this guy is 18, right? He's 18. Yes. Say that I can say that he's very good looking. <laughs> he's very, <laughs> he's very I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> um, as long as he is 18 years old, I can confidently tell you he is very good looking. We can share a photo on our Instagram as well, but he's in this navy blazer and a white button up and he's kind of looking back over his shoulder. Um, but yeah, it's a great photo. So happy birthday to Prince Emmanuel of Belgium. And what a great year to turn so I can comment on how good you look now. <laughs> Legally <laughs> comment that you're handsome. <laughs> Okay, so speaking of royal birthdays, you mentioned this last week, Rachel, that Prince Christian of Denmark has a birthday coming up on October 15th. He'll also be turning 18. So you can tell us if you think he looks nice on his birthday. I can already photo. tell you that he is a good looking young man. I will not <laughs> comment any further until October 15th. <laughs> So we've got a few details coming out about the official celebration, but on the 15th, the future king and his family as a quick reminder his father is crown prince frederick and his mother is crown princess mary they'll have a balcony appearance at frederick the eighth's palace followed by a formal dinner party that evening at christian borg's palace which will be hosted by the queen and i thought this was really interesting so there will be 200 guests at the party which will include other 18 year olds from all around denmark that are distinguished in the areas of sport art and culture sounds like so every sounds like king charles sorry to interrupt you sounds like king charles took a page from prince christian because yeah he's, he's doing the same thing except for 75 year olds yeah, I think maybe he maybe he heard about these plans, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. every local city around Denmark will be represented by two 18 year old guests in attendance and we'll also see other royals um, in his generation attending from other countries. So we're expecting to see Princess Estelle of Sweden and she'll be coming with her mother, Crown Princess Victoria. I believe Estelle is, is she like 11? I think maybe yeah, 11. she's like younger. That. Mm -hmm. And then Princess Ingrid Alexandra of Norway will be attending with her father, Crown Prince Hakan. Um, and I was actually wondering, I don't know if um, Prince Christian is friends with Prince Emmanuel of Belgium, since they're the same age, they're both turning 18, but I, I didn't see any reports as of yet if um, any of our Belgian royals will be in attendance. So we'll you know wait. they all know each other, so... There's I'm sure gonna be, there's going to be a lot of royals there, especially the younger ones, like the not like not the heir apparent, but the one behind that. A lot of them will be at that party. 
for sure. Well, next month, following his birthday, there will be a council of state and they'll grant Prince Christian the ability to act as head of state in the event that he's ever needed. Um, and he is now also entitled to an allowance, which, surprise, surprise, he is planning to decline until I he's love these school. people. I love this generation. Of, this is the <laughs> first time I've ever said that I love Gen Z. No offense well, to our Gen Z listeners, but like, go, these, this next generation of royals is great. Well, he, yeah, he's already, he's already expressed that he's going to wait until he finishes school and he begins his work as a full-time royal. And as you said, this has been quite a trend among this generation. And I do think it makes sense. You know, I, I like that they're waiting to accept money from the government until they're working for it and serving the people. But I've got to ask you, Rachel. So I feel like we've established maybe this expectation now know, to decline right? <laughs> the allowance at 18. So I'm wondering, do you think everyone in this generation like <laughs> feels this obligation, like they're going to be really harshly judged if they don't decline it? And, <laughs> you know, I mean, it kind of it kind of impacts like how the public sees you as a leader and expects you to behave in your role. Don't I you mean, think? that's very valid. Thanks, Catherine Amalia. Like you set off this trend <laughs> where now, like if we accept our allowance, we're a jerk. That's so funny. I mean, Look, they, look, Christian and Catherine Amalia and all of them are doing okay. You know what? They're going to be all right without their million whatever allowance. But I mean, I respect it. I mean, I respect it when Catherine Amalia did it. I respect it now. And again, like that's a lot of money that, I mean, I wouldn't even like, if it were me, I, I mean, look, if it were me, like in my current financial standing, I would take the million dollars or whatever. But like, if I were you know, crown princess, I would, I would maybe donate it to a charity that I loved that I, you know, that, that meant a lot to me. And, uh, cause like the money, I guess the money's just sitting there. I don't know. But anyway, yes, to your, to your question, I think there is that expectation now, which is kind of cool, but kind of like, if I'm the Royal, I'm like, now, dang it. Like, thanks. Like now I can't, like, can't accept it without, you know, looking like a jerk, but I don't know. Um, I think it's kind of a cool trend. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is. And it says a lot about them as individuals and, and how they view their, their future roles. So, mm -hmm. you know, anyway, we'll, we'll look out for more birthday celebrations from Prince Christian. Mm -hmm. so. And I have two, one is about the British Royal family, really quick notes. And one is about Letitia. So Fergie's birthday is on the 15th. So happy early birthday to her. And then did you see, so I, I didn't go deep into what she was like what the engagement was, but Letizia stepped out today in this green outfit for World Mental Health. Yes, I saw that. Did you see that? She looked amazing. Oh my goodness. Absolutely amazing. So those are my two late notes. Okay, so let's move into our final segment of the day and actually our final Royal Deep Dive. This has been a really fun series to do. I've enjoyed it. I hope you listeners have as well. Um, in place of Royal Deep Dive, I'm going to start doing, as I mentioned, a Royal Royals Around the World Factoid of the week. So they won't be as long, but they will be an interesting fact about all of these different royal families from across Europe and the world that we talk about on occasion around here. So, but as promised for our final royal deep dive today, we are going to a member of the royal family we've kind of glossed over in the past, but I feel deserves our very last for now anyway, royal deep dive spot. And as I said on a previous episode, it is Wallace Simpson, Duchess of Windsor. She is the woman whose love completely changed the British royal family forever. And she was born Bessie Wallace Warfield. So I wonder if Elizabeth's family are the Warfields on mm -hmm. June 19th, 1896. And she died on April 24th, 1986, which is just about what, five months before I was born, only after living one heck of a life. So Wallace grew up in Baltimore and her father died shortly after her birth. Her first marriage, she was married three times. Her first marriage was to a Navy officer named Wynn Spencer, which is actually really interesting. He's a Spencer. I'm sure there's no relation, but that's just fascinating. Anyway, he was a heavy drinker. So the marriage eventually ended in divorce. She married a second time to Ernest Simpson. That's where the Simpson comes in. During this marriage in 1931, she met Edward, who was then the Prince of Wales. It wasn't until January 1934, though, that she became Edward's mistress. So by the end of that year, Edward was wildly, crazily, I'm not overstating this, 
he really was like off his rocker in love with her, like uh, to an unhealthy degree. <laughs> and to him, she, her domineering manner and laissez-faire attitude about his position. You know what? Men in power always love that when women do not care. Like I'm thinking right now of JFK Jr. and Carolyn Bissett Kennedy. When JFK Jr., who is like the love of my life, my biggest crush ever, he even puts William to shame um, and Carl Phillip and Peter Phillips and all of them, all of them. Rachel, yeah. I'm going to start a board over here with all of your. <laughs> oh my God. Questions. Oh my God. I was talking to somebody last night actually. And I had forgot, this is totally not related to Wallace Simpson, but I had totally forgotten that when I was in college, I had a list every week and you're going to laugh at this so hard, a list every week in college football season of the top 10 hottest quarterbacks of the week and like this is a long time ago I was in college a long time ago but like who am I like anyway yeah if you have that board Jessica it will be full but JFK Jr. is the number one okay there will never be if there ever is someone who I find more attractive I don't know how that's possible but anyway JFK why am I even talking about this but JFK Jr. when he proposed to Carolyn Bissett she said, I'll think about it. And like men in power love that stuff. Like they love that. Like they love unaffected women. And that's how Wallace was with him. That was, that was incredibly, incredibly attractive to him. She was also very domineering, which like Edward probably has like some serious issues that needed therapy, but that's, that's really none of my business. But anyway, so by the time that Edward and Wallace fell in love she was a socialite and Wallace was in love with Edward too I mean it wasn't a one-way street she fell in love with him that August so Edward had become dependent on Wallace again this is not a, this is not a healthy relationship and he could not live without her so says he so when Edward proposed the ring was an emerald mount in yellow gold set with diamonds and the words we are ours now engraved on it which actually would be very romantic and very sweet if the story honestly wasn't so icky in its own way but Wallace finally divorced Ernest Simpson, her second husband, and at an evening party at Buckingham Palace, Edward introduced Wallace to his mother, Queen Mary. Uh, that did not really go so well. His father, King George V, was outraged. As, as we've talked about this on the show, divorce, now divorced people are not seen as obviously if, if we looked poorly on divorced people in the royal family now, then no one would be safe except like Edward and Sophie and William and Kate. But mm -hmm. uh, divorced people were really in this time kind of seen as outcasts and twice divorced people. I mean, you can only imagine that. So Edward's love for Wallace went beyond, again, what was probably healthy. He showered her with jewels and money. Palace staff became really alarmed because his love for her began to interfere with his official duties. So Edward would give up anything for her, even the throne, as we now know. His decision to choose love over the crown literally caused a constitutional crisis on account of her status as a divorcee, and it eventually led, to, of course, to Edward's abdication on December 10th, 1936. I, this is not in my research, but I just remember like his, his father, King uh, George V said of him that he would ruin himself within a year, Edward would, and he sure, he sure did. Wow. So I'm telling you this story again would be very romantic if it wasn't so deeply unhealthy in nature. Like they, they very much loved each other, but I'm, I think it goes across the line into unhealthy. Anyway, eventually on June 3rd, 1937, Edward and Wallace married um, this is kind of a slap in the face. June 3rd, had he lived to see it, would have been King George V's 72nd birthday. And Queen Mary thought Edward and Wallace chose this particular day to get married to throw salt in the wound and spite the family, which who knows if they mm -hmm. didn't, but I would bet maybe they did. So when they married, Wallace was not given an HRH status. And the controversial behavior did not end after the abdication. So before, during, and after World War II, the couple were suspected to be Nazi sympathizers. And this gets glossed over a lot in this story because the abdication is seen as the big deal, but this is also obviously a serious problem. So by 1940, Edward was appointed governor of the Bahamas, he and Wallace moved there until he left that role in 1945. In the 1950s and 1960s, they went back and forth between Europe and the U.S. They very much lived a life of leisure as socialites, kind of depicted in the crown a little bit, if you remember that, listeners. Edward died of throat cancer in 1972. Afterwards, Wallace lived in seclusion. She was rarely seen in public again, even though she lived for another 14 years. 
She became frail. She suffered from dementia. She suffered several falls. She broke her hip twice, actually, and mm. she basically lived her life as a recluse. So in 1980, she lost the ability to speak a full six years, mind you, before she died. And she finally ended up dying in Paris in 1986. Princess Diana, who also died in Paris, um, the strange through line there. Princess Diana said after Wallace's funeral, I find this very interesting, that it was the only time she had ever seen her mother-in-law, Queen Elizabeth, cry. And mm -hmm. I think that it wasn't because she had such affection for Wallace Simpson, probably, but think about it. I mean, Wallace and Edward's love story completely changed, obviously changed the course of her life. She was never, we forget sometimes because she was such a long reigning monarch that she was never meant to be monarch originally, yeah. right? Although if, if Edward and Wallace would have never had kids and they never did have kids, but if they would not have had kids and he'd somehow stayed on the throne, she would have become queen anyway, eventually, but, um, but not, not the way it happened. And so it has to be really really jarring to think about the role that Wallace Simpson played in her life and how without her, her life would be so different. So again, one can imagine the enormous impact for good or for ill that Wallace played on the queen's life and uh, she and her uncle Edward. So by the way, as much travel as Wallace did, she acted, I find this, this is like one of the most interesting factoids I found in all of my royal deep dive research. So Wallace had a massive fear of flying and it was for a reason. It was birthed after she saw two different plane crashes about two weeks apart, like fatal plane crashes, two weeks. Can you imagine seeing one plane crash in your life, let alone two, two wow. weeks apart. So she hated flying to say the least about Wallace Simpson in some in summation, she was a complicated figure, but again, for good or ill, love defined her life normally we would think of that as a beautiful thing i mean she no doubt had a love story but it was complicated so that's your final royal deep dive wallace simpson who we've never really talked about on the i mean glossed over it but never really talked about so there's that series i love that we might do that yeah. again you know? That was a lot of fun. I, it's been exciting seeing what you'll come up with every week. And like you said, we've talked about Wallace Simpson briefly here, but we definitely have not gone into that much detail. And I love that our listener, Elizabeth, was anticipating this and sent us that note ahead of this um, episode so we can include her perspective in here too. I thought that was really fun. Yeah. And we love obviously getting DMs, emails, all of the above. So keep sending them and let me tell you how to do that. So First of all, we're on Instagram at Podcast Royal. Um, Jessica puts polls up there, all kinds of things so that you can interact with us. If you have questions or thoughts to share, always DM us on Instagram. Send us an email at hellopodcastroyal at gmail.com. That is all we've got for episode 109. We will be back next week with episode 110 and all the things that have happened in the royal family since. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.